Thank you very much. Dear State Councillor, Mr. Steyert, Director, Professor Epini, Professor Morchet, uh, distinguished guests, I see that we have uh, quite a few ambassadors here, Your Excellencies, but uh, especially dear students. It's indeed uh, a great pleasure to be here in Freiburg, in Freiburg and to speak to you today. And I think that uh, I really felt very well welcome. I would like to thank the choir for excellent music. And uh, I think as, uh, as Mr. Steyer has mentioned in the beginning, I already feel the spirit of Freiburg <laughs> and uh, hopefully we can come back to it even earlier than in three years. So we'll see how that will go. But of course, it's uh, always uh, a pleasure for me and I always enjoy engaging with a new generation of uh, bright young minds who will shape our continent uh, in the decades uh, to come. For centuries, the beautiful city of Fribourg, perched on banks uh, of the river, river Serene, has served as a crossroad, a place where bridges are built, literally, metaphorically, and linguistically. Trade has brought wealth and prosperity here since uh, 11th uh, century. River, road, and later rail have brought people and cultures together. And given that the city lies on the major language border, it is no surprise that the University of Fribourg, an esteemed institution tracing its origin back to 1580, is the only university in Switzerland offering a full range of courses in both French and German. We come together today as Europeans, but we find ourselves in a Europe which feels unfamiliar. This city has seen its fair share of upheaval over the centuries, but for a long time now, it has known nothing but peace. So too, Europe as a whole had enjoyed absence of war, until just over a year ago when Putin launched his barbaric attempt to subdue a peaceful, democratic, free nation by force. The war in Ukraine rages on, causing death and destruction on a massive scale and bringing misery to millions of Ukrainians. The European Union stands shoulder to shoulder with its partners, including Switzerland, resolute in our support for Ukraine and its people. But the war has also changed the wider world, and nowhere more so than here in Europe. In the EU, the new geopolitical reality has driven us to seek to consolidate our relationships, relationships uh, with those who share our fundamental values, geostrategic objectives, and faith in rule-based order. Working with partners will be vital if we are to successfully overcome the global challenges that we all share, some, but not all, stemming from the war in Ukraine. Be it increases in energy prices, inflation, and the cost of living, or remaining competitive as an attractive destination for all future-oriented investment in a global environment of increasingly assertive, even hostile, economic policies. At the same time, we must not forget longer-term objectives, such as our ambition to achieve climate neutrality by mid-century, notably by accelerating the twin green and digital transition while boosting our strategic autonomy in key industries and technologies. I see the will for stronger, more strategic cooperation across our continent. Take, for example, the European political community, an EU-led initiative launched in Prague last October. It was a landmark event which brought together the leaders of 44 European countries, including the 27 EU member states and Switzerland. The summit sent a powerful message of united front after the return of war to European soil. It is in this context that I want to see EU-Swiss relations to be in step with the times by modernizing them and unlocking their full potential to the benefit of both sides. 
The EU is Switzerland's largest trading partner. The volume of trade with southern German states of Baden-Württemberg and Bavaria alone is larger than with China. For the EU, Switzerland ranks fourth. Given our shared values, we are also strong political allies. Switzerland has, for instance, adopted sanctions against Russia similar to ours. We also value Switzerland's contribution to missions and operation under the EU common foreign and security policy. And Switzerland is, of course, deeply integrated into the EU single market. The integrity, functioning and fairness of which are of paramount importance to us. This is precisely at the heart of our ongoing engagement with Switzerland. When I took over the responsibility for the EU's relations with Switzerland, they were at critical point. With the Federal Council having just terminated uh, negotiations on an institutional framework agreement. This overarching agreement was a priority for the EU in order to govern Swiss participation in the EU single market. It will come as no surprise to those of you who are learning about European studies when I say that we take the integrity of our single market very seriously. As it turns 30 this year, it has become one of the EU's biggest achievements because it is the backbone of our economy, the engine of our integration, and one of uh, our most potent tools to protect and empower businesses and people, especially in the times of crisis. Despite the setback in 2021, the EU's door has always remained open to invest in our relationship with Switzerland. To strengthen a climate of trust and better understand what can be done, the Commission and Switzerland have started to engage in exploratory talks now marking one year. These past 12 months have, been, have seen eight rounds of talks and numerous exchanges at expert level. The Commission has made a significant step towards our Swiss counterparts by agreeing to approach these talks and, and effectively our relations through a series of bilateral agreements instead of one overarching institutional framework agreement. My visit to Switzerland provides a good opportunity to take stock of what we have achieved so far, where the open issues lie, what our respective expectations are, and how we can address them in a credible time frame. In the end, it is this thorough, focused, and committed uh, preparation in the form of the exploratory talks that will help us determine whether we have the right foundation to move forward into full negotiations on the future of our relationship. Because this time, I'm convinced we must succeed. I can assure you that my team and I are working precisely with that objective in mind. I'm happy to say that we have achieved some progress in the form of a better share understanding on a number of issues. But several sensitive points uh, remain open and much work remains to be done towards a common understanding on all structural issues, namely a level playing field on the EU single market, notably by agreeing dynamic uh, alignment with the EU law, introducing equivalent state aid rules, establishing a functioning dispute settlement mechanism, and settling Switzerland's regular and fair financial contribution to EU cohesion policy. Let me briefly outline where the EU is coming from. The EU single market helps drive our economic growth and global competitiveness. It is an invaluable asset that needs to be constantly maintained and improved. Therefore, the Commission continuously works on its uh, development while ensuring that existing rules work in practice. That is why Switzerland's dynamic alignment with the EU law makes sense. And so does a level playing field for all economic operators, no matter whether they are based in the EU or Switzerland and across all fields of the single market. Because privileged access to this market, the world's largest, means the same set of rights, but also the same set of 
obligations. And it is a matter of integrity, fairness, and predictability. That is why we also need an effective dispute settlement mechanism in place to ensure an adequate implementation of our agreements. I know there are concerns about the role of the European Court of Justice in Switzerland. That is why the EU is proposing a balanced model. First, the role of European Court of Justice is indirect. It only gives a ruling when it is asked to do so by arbitral tribunal. Second, when we speak about the role for the court, we refer to those areas only where there are concepts of EU law. So we have listened to your concerns, but Switzerland must also be sensitive to ours. The European Court of Justice must be the sole and final arbiter of concepts of the EU law, or there will be differences in the rules across uh, the EU single market. Moreover, Justice is blind. The European Court of Justice will protect Swiss economic operators on the EU single market in the same way as EU operators. Where concepts of EU law apply, it will protect Swiss workers in the same way as it will protect EU workers. A regular, fair, mutually agreed financial contribution from Switzerland to EU cohesion policy helping us address regional disparities is also a logical counterpart of participating in the single market. Switzerland, for its part, gains an estimated 24 billion euros per year from this participation, according to Bertelsmann Stiftung. And lastly, ensuring the fundamental principle of the free movement of uh, people and workers is also vital. This is not a technical or market question, but rather the human face of the close partnership between the EU and Switzerland. And high levels of social protection and full respect uh, for the idea of the same salary, for the same work, in the same place, are as important for the EU as they are for Switzerland. We have shown that uh, we are ready to agree to exceptions that are specific to the bilateral relationship between the EU and Switzerland. For instance, addressing any risk that EU citizens move to Switzerland just to benefit from social security. We can reach a compromise if Switzerland is sensitive to our concerns, notably the impact of our bilateral agreements for the dynamic within the European Union. I'm confident that uh, we can find that balance. All in all, we need to strive for a systemic solution covering all the structural issues across the various future agreements while being, being interconnected in case of non-compliance. Dear friends, as uh, time passes, our bilateral agreements are aging. Some even ceasing to apply. And without their modernization, our relations will inevitably erode over time. The status quo or ad hoc solutions are simply not a valid option and certainly not something that we should be content to settle for. We have an opportunity to jointly upgrade and future-proof a framework for our relations for decades to come. At the same time, we do acknowledge that any package we might agree on needs to strike the right balance between the interests of the EU and Switzerland. If we succeed, this in turn will lead us to unlocking the full potential of our cooperation, including in other areas such as electricity, health and food safety. Research is another area that would benefit uh, from the EU and Switzerland agreeing on a comprehensive way forward. Swiss Association in Horizon Europe, the EU's key research and innovation funding program of some 95.5 billion euros would be a priority in the joint way forward. But again, this is a part of a broader package. In another word, if you are to move forward on new agreements, including one on Horizon Europe, we need to move at the same pace on all underlying issues in our relations. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that EU and uh, Switzerland are more than just neighbors. We are economic partners. 
We are geopolitical allies. Daily, the free movement of goods and people in particular nurtures the privileged partnership between us. And I came here to engage and listen. I'm keen to hear from my counterparts, businesses, stakeholders. Tonight, I would like to hear mainly from you students, the next generation of leaders, because you represent the future. You are the ones who will have to take Europe forward in the decades to come. And I like to think that the future will also be a bright one for EU-Swiss relations. Creating a more stable, future-oriented partnership, one which offers deeper cooperation in areas of mutual interest would be a significant step in that direction. For that, an unambiguous political will to engage on real issues within a credible timetable is instrumental. The Commission, for its part, is ready to keep its foot on the pedal with the aim of concluding exploratory talks as soon as possible and taking the necessary step to that end, uh, involving the Council, our Member States and the European Parliament. My hope is that we could conclude the negotiations by summer of 2024, making the best use of the political cycles on both sides. I can assure you that my team and I are committed to supporting the current momentum and exploiting the existing, existing window of opportunity. Thank you very much. Merci, Monsieur le Vice-président, pour vos propos optimistes, encourageants et nous montrant le chemin vers l'avenir et une solution rapide euh, de, euh, des difficultés que nous connaissons certes encore, mais il y a des solutions comme vous l'avez mentionné. Nous avons euh, maintenant le temps, l'occasion euh, de poser des questions au vice-président de euh, la Commission. Euh, et je, à qui puis-je donner la parole Comme vous avez entendu, le, monsieur le vice-président est intéressé aussi à discuter avec la génération future, les jeunes, les étudiants et étudiantes qui sont aussi nombreux et nombreuses dans la salle euh, ici aujourd'hui. Nous avons des micros à gauche et à droite qui sont déjà là. Et euh, voilà. Peut-être si vous dites juste votre nom et votre... Um, hello, my name is Nadra Mao. I am a master student here at the University of Fribourg and I'm also public affairs specialist for SQS, former notified body of the EU in the medical field. My question is regarding the MRA, um, especially the medical, since, um, well, the erosion of it, as we may all know, the medical product field in Switzerland can no longer export into the EU. However, there would have been a question of a mini MRA um, as to make sure that Switzerland as well as the EU can continue um, their uh, export and import of products as well as um, accepting the certificates of SQS as notified body or reinstating SQS since we did adapt the MDR regulations. So my question will be why would there not be a possibility for a mini MRA or however you would want to call it. Thank you. Peut-être nous prenons deux, trois questions. Vous pouvez aussi poser vos questions en français si, si vous voulez, en allemand aussi. Ou en allemand. Hello, my name is Catherine Foster. I'm the executive director of the Green Digital Finance Alliance, a Swiss-based not-for-profit. I'm also on a number of EU boards, EIT Food and the ESMA Fisc, but I work out of my home office here in Fribourg. 
Um, my question is about the EU horizon and research funding and what, what indications you can give us about the future of that, including the Swiss mechanism, but how this will evolve over the next five to ten years. Thank you. Hello, <laughs> my name is Lucia. Sorry, my voice is a bit, um, is a bit have a stuffy nose. Um, um, I'm from the Erasmus Student Network, and I Erasmus. wanted to uh, ask, uh, in reference also, sorry, <laughs> to the uh, question that was asked before of the reassociation potential, potential reassociation to Horizon Europe, how do you see, if you see a potential reassociation also to the Erasmus Plus program? and uh, what can be done better to ensure that Swiss youth and European youth have the same um, opportunities in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that, that's the yeah, young lady over there. Thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, to the, to the, to the first question, uh, it was clear that uh, uh, the, the young lady is a very good specialist and she's studying these uh, issues in a great, great detail. Very, very impressive. All the abbreviation, all the elements and aspects being, being covered. Of course, the uh, MRI, the, uh, the mutual recognition is about, uh, about market access. And I think this is what uh, we've been discussing with our Swiss friends uh, uh, for, uh, for, quite some, uh, for, for quite some time. And I think, uh, therefore, you heard me saying several times uh, uh, in my uh, remarks, uh, uh, reference to dynamic alignment, because uh, what is the beauty of the of the single market? Once you are in the single market, you have the you have the same rules, you have the same standards. So it means that once you produce something according to these rules, it doesn't have to be checked anywhere. It just can flow freely across the borders, and and um, and and I know because I'm from, from Slovakia, that what kind of change it was when suddenly we become the members of the EU and what kind of alleviation of the, of the burden of the, uh, of, 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 of the documentary work on the different kind of uh, uh, applications and uh, mutual equivalence exercise uh, uh, you've been liberated from. And for that, what I think it's, it's absolutely crucial, it's important that we would respect uh, the, the same rules, that we would apply them uniformly and, and we have uh, the, the same legal base and we respect uh, the, the, same, the same standards. And um, as I said, uh, unfortunately, we need the modernization of our, uh, of, uh, our uh, legal, legal base, of our documents. When I was uh, reading my uh, first in-depth uh, briefing material on EU-Swiss uh, relations, I can tell that I was quite surprised that for us the, the basic uh, free trade agreement uh, is coming from 1972. I was born in 1966. <laughs> and uh, it was before the single market was created. It was before Euro was introduced. It, 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 it was before the Schengen uh, was uh, brought uh, into, uh, into existence. Uh, and uh, therefore, I think this just proves uh, by itself that we need to work very closely with our, uh, with our, with our Swiss uh, uh, friends and partners uh, to modernize this relationship, really to find uh, the, the solid basis which would frame well our cooperation in all these economic, uh, uh, economic uh, uh, domains. Of course, for me, who really likes to visit universities and, and uh, talk to the young students. The fact that uh, we do not have Erasmus in, in, in places is, is very unfortunate because I know how I benefited from student exchanges. I know how my children benefited from student exchanges. And I know that once you go through, through Erasmus programs, it enriches you tremendously. It gives you the possibility to to test your language skills, uh, to learn about new cultures, to find a lot of new, new friends, and, and to see uh, how the things are done in another, in another country. And I know that also the uh, Swiss uh, researchers are very strong and they would like to participate and work with us in, uh, in, Horizon, in Horizon Europe. But as I said, uh, for that we have to have uh, clearly 
uh, the, the rules well established, well respected, properly, properly informed. And I can, I can promise you that uh, at the moment when we, when we find on both sides that now we believe that uh, our teams in exploratory talks uh, clearly uh, established and that would be uh, one of the topics which I uh, will have a pleasure to discuss with uh, Foreign Minister uh, Cassis uh, this evening and we will be ready uh, to adopt uh, the, the common understanding with the clear, clear principles how we want to uh, negotiate uh, our uh, future agreements that at the same time let's start, let's open uh, the, the negotiations on the uh, uh, Swiss uh, accession into the European Union programs. And I think that uh, it should be motivational for all of us to progress fast in uh, uh, the overall negotiations, but also on the negotiations on the union's programs, because I think that it's clearly good for both uh, for, for EU and uh, uh, for, uh, for Switzerland. So if you ask me what is my vision for five to ten years from now for these programs, of course I hope that uh, by then, definitely, we will, we will sort out our uh, bilateral issues, that we will have a firm, solid basis upon which to build. And of course, uh, that uh, Switzerland would be participating actively in Horizon, in, in Erasmus, and uh, that these programs will grow from strength to strength. I still remember when our common research uh, programs been much smaller than they are. Now, Horizon is the biggest uh, publicly funded uh, research program in the world. And uh, it's uh, really uh, the, the reference points for the, for the global researchers community. So this is what is uh, on the table, this is what, what is on the offer, and I hope we will both grab, grasp uh, that uh, opportunities and start to solve one problem after another, and we will build the bilateral relations the European Union and Switzerland truly deserve. Thank you very much. Uh, so there was a question over there, yeah. and then over there also. Good afternoon. My name is Vanessa Scarpati, and I am a student in uh, European Studies and European Law here at the University of Freiburg. I have been analyzing the role of the delegation of the UEA to Switzerland and the Liechtenstein into the relationships between Switzerland and the European Union. So, my question is, since the Swiss federal government um, has said no to the Accord Cadre in 2021, and since last year, Swiss, the, the Switzerland government and the European Union have been uh, have been having new talks um, to make maybe a new agreement and you just say uh, that maybe in uh, or it might be like that in 2024 you might come to a new agreement or in, um, is like maybe the European Union is it in that uh, the Swiss uh, government would say again oh no <laughs> we're sorry <laughs> Uh, we cannot make a decision, and what would happen if that was the case? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Jan Fauconnet from the University of Bern. I was wondering what would be your response, Mr. Vice President, to the concerns voiced by some Swiss politicians regarding the Citizen Rights Directive, UBRL in German, um, since it might, according to some people, some part of the political spectrum in Switzerland, cause some kind of social tourism. People from less richer parts of Europe coming to Switzerland to profit, according to them, the social aids accorded in our country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Philip Langer, I would actually be in charge of the 
horizon negotiations. Uh, I hope <laughs> they will be <laughs> started <laughs> before I retire. <laughs> but I will only uh, ask a question as a, as a person, not, not uh, in my function. First, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's great that you come to Switzerland to discuss the things. I, I think it's, it's really the, one of the problems is that we, it has not been discussing. And, and actually, hearing your words on, on, uh, on, on Horizon and, and, uh, no, um, and uh, Erasmus and knowing the situation quite well, my wish would just be, uh, because Mr. Steyer said it, um, as Switzerland has been excluded from Erasmus also starting 2014, and that has not been re-established, basically things have just fallen into place on another route. And, and, the, and the, the mobility functions, and unfortunately it's not Erasmus, but it functions. And, and two-thirds of the program uh, horizon are still accessible and it functions as well, but it's less beautiful. So my wish would just be to, to not to wait to the very end, but, but as you hinted, uh, to, to actually use the momentum of the researchers which, who are very pro-EU, uh, who are, are open to international, not to the very end, but use that momentum basically as oil in the machinery to, to put things forward and not until 25, 26, when really basically we already, or you discussed the next program, not, not longer, but that one. So thanks for coming. Thank you. So thank you very much. So I, will, I, I saw that uh, EU ambassador to Switzerland and Liechtenstein, Petros, is sitting here. He uh, was very thrilled where he learned that he's subject of a study. So I mean, I will introduce <laughs> after the lecture so we can provide you more insights uh, how they're doing here uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in Bern. And uh, uh, concerning your, your, your question, I think it's, it's, it's true and that uh, uh, why uh, we are working on this issue so intensively because you've been, you've been correct, you, you said it uh, uh, precisely that the Swiss Federal uh, Council walked away from, from the negotiations. So what is of course needed now is to rebuild the bilateral relationship we uh, are doing our utmost uh, uh, to rebuild uh, this relationship, but also to look uh, for the eventual landing zones. That's, the, that's the, I would say, the topic of the exploratory talks, to make sure that uh, we understand each other well, we know where our negotiations uh, could and should land. So once we really open them, we would have at first uh, I would say very realistic chance that we are going to succeed this time. I think that we cannot afford second failure to be, to be so I really would like to avoid that oh no scenario as you, as you, <laughs> as you, as you said. And, um, and of course uh, we, we also um, um, want to make sure that, uh, the, that our discussions at that time would be so, so mature that we would proceed with the, ne the negotiation um, um, in a, in a timely, timely manner. I know that uh, summer 2024 might sound uh, as uh, very ambitious, but we know this topic quite well. We've been uh, negotiating the, 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 the previous agreement for, for almost uh, 10 years. Uh, we know that there might be some different accents, uh, different focuses, additional uh, specificities, but I think overall uh, we know these topics quite well and what we need is to find uh, the positive political will on the both sides uh, uh, to, to work uh, on these issues and uh, to make sure that we will proceed not only with a good discussion but also with uh, the positive uh, uh, end results uh, in, in our side. That, that, should be, that, should be our, uh, that should be our goal. And on, on the question uh, of, of, the, of the young gentleman about uh, the social, social tourism, I think that uh, since uh, uh, these topics we discussed for the first time with Switzerland, a lot has changed in the European Union. A lot has changed. Our social legislation dramatically uh, evolved. We have new posting of worker directives. We have very clear, very clear rule that there should be same wage for the same work at the same place. Because also in European Union, you have the countries which have very, very high, high wages. Like, for example, look, Luxembourg, and they have even higher proportion of foreigners working in Luxembourg. And, and knowing uh, quite well the, the situation in Luxembourg, they are not, not complaining, and they are one of the most performing and successful economies we have uh, in, uh, the, in, the, in, the, in the European in the European Union. So a lot has changed, and therefore I'm, I'm really uh, pleased and, uh, and I'm very obliged uh, 
uh, to the social partners whom I will have a chance uh, to meet tomorrow just to explain them that, you know, we've been not stagnating uh, on the same positions for, for many years because for us, uh, the, the living standards, uh, social policies, social security is, is as important as it is for you. We also want the best possible salaries and best possible social protection uh, for our uh, uh, people, for our workers in the European Union. I would say that it's a European way of life. I mean, that's our social model. We are very proud of it and I will be very happy to go into the great details with the uh, um, uh, social partners uh, uh, tomorrow morning so we can listen to their concern, to their worries and I believe reassure them in a, many aspects that uh, uh, just work, work with us, uh, uh, look what has changed in Europe, how our legislation has evolved, how our living standards has, has, has evolved and I think, uh, I believe that we would have a, a constructive uh, discussion. On citizens, on top of it, I would say but especially because I'm, I'm talking uh, to young people, but also to academicians and, and, and professionals. I think we shouldn't, we shouldn't forget that, uh, that uh, the freedoms of the citizens, the, uh, the human rights, the citizens' rights, the workers' rights, that they, are, they are a human face of our integration. This is how the people are, are perceiving if we are doing a good job in the European Union or not. What Europe can do to make sure that my, my living standards uh, are adequate? How the European Union can help us in the time of these geopolitical upheavals uh, uh, I was referring to in the morning? What more can the European Union do to, to push the energy prices down? How can we make sure that we can defend ourselves, uh, especially in these new rough uh, uh, periods uh, where war returned back to the, to the European, European continent? We are, I think, back uh, in times where size matters. You have to be big, you have to be strong, you have to be competitive. And therefore, we are, we are putting so much emphasis on making sure that we would work and uh, talk to our closest partners, be it within uh, the Europe, European space, be it in our neighborhood, but also be it with our transatlantic uh, uh, partners or like-minded countries across, across the globe because, I mean, this time requires this close cooperation and mutual understanding. And therefore, uh, our cooperation and relationship with Switzerland is so important and I believe that uh, we would see it uh, in the same way and therefore I think it's absolutely worth every investment, every, every effort to upgrade it uh, to the new level, which, as I said before, both uh, European citizens and Swiss citizens deserve. Ah, there was a question, we started negotiations on Horizon already <laughs> with, the gentleman, with the gentleman over here. Uh, I think that uh, here, what is I think very important to, uh, to underline is that if it comes to the uh, Horizon program, the Switzerland is a third country. And, uh, and, and I'm sure that you know it very well, so it requires uh, uh, the negotiations, how the Switzerland as a, as a third country would participate uh, in uh, uh, horizon uh, programs and, and for us it's very important that uh, we would uh, treat it as a, as a part of the package and for us it's absolutely okay uh, to treat uh, all these issues parallelly. We do not want to wait with it until the end. We want uh, to establish between our teams, between uh, uh, Mr. Cassis and, and myself, yeah, I think our teams did a great job. We have very solid uh, uh, basis uh, for our mutual understanding. This time, um, we believe that uh, we can do it. Uh, we hope that uh, we, will, we will hear the clear signal from the Federal Council that uh, that's, that's the position of the, of the government. And uh, we will be, of course, uh, very happy uh, uh, to, to start discussing also these issues like Horizon, Erasmus, other union programs, because we know how important it is for young people, for researchers, and for our mutual cooperation. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
Uh, hi, my name is uh, Robin Fichtner. I'm a master's student in business communication. And my question is, you just talked about strength, about being big. And uh, I think that's something that we all read in the news about, is that the US um, wants to strengthen their economy. And that's why the Biden administration introduced the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, now, I think it was welcomed and probably also aligns with the EU Green Deal. Yet, there was the danger of a, of a possible trade war. Now, your uh, colleague, the Commission's President uh, von der Leyen, went to Washington and there seems to be a solution. So, my question is, what are um, the implications maybe of the solution for Swiss companies? And what role does Switzerland play in all these talks? Thank you. Uh, Raul Suarez, I am a former student of this university, an <laughs> old former student. Uh, I would like to, uh, we all appreciate a lot the, the very positive perspective you are opening this evening. Yet, I would like to ask you a very frank question. You are discussing with the representatives of the government, of the Swiss government, the federal government, uh, with high qualified a, a staff. The problem is that at the end of the day, whatever conclusion you get from that discussion will be judged by the people. In this country, the problem is not to reach an agreement, is to ratify that agreement because we are in a semi-directed democracy. So the problem is not what your counterparts think about what you are proposing. The problem is what can be acceptable, agreeable for the people in what you are concluding. We made already the experience 30 years ago. In 92, we had a beautiful agreement for building the Rock 10 economic area. And it was refused by half percent and something of the population. And that's why we are now in this situation. So my question is, how do you use, how do you understand these levels of the agreeability, the acceptance of what you are agreeing with the civil servants, the Swiss, uh, Swiss civil servants, when you consider your own strategy? Because at the end of the day, I'm sure that you and our people will reach a beautiful agreement, but we don't know if that will be accepted. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi. Um, I'm Nathan. I'm a PhD student at the legal faculty here in Fribourg. And perhaps my question is not as technical as some of the questions we had today, but you've spoken a lot about youth and students, and what I was wondering is what role do you see for the youth, Swiss youth and European youth um, in EU-Swiss relations, but also perhaps more generally for the um, European project? Thank you. Can, can you repeat it, please? I, I, I have to admit I didn't, I didn't hear you. Yeah, well. sorry. So you, you mentioned the importance of youth um, several times today, and my question is more general, perhaps more philosophical, but I was wondering what role do you see for us, the youth, Swiss youth, but also European youth, in EU-Switzerland relations, but also more generally for the European project? Okay. Thank you very much. So the gentleman over there was, uh, uh, was uh, the question of the uh, Inflation Reduction Act in the in US and, and Green Deal policies we have uh, in uh, the European Union. You would, you would recall that when the Commission under the leadership of Ursula von der Leyen was presenting its priorities uh, for this mandate, it was very clear that uh, the transformation of the European economy into green and uh, digital powerhouse uh, on the global stage was the key priority. We've been the first major economy which adopted uh, uh, the climate law, meaning that now we have enshrined in our law that uh, in the second half of the century we want to be climate neutral economy. 
I personally, among um, other things, I'm uh, also leading our efforts uh, of the European Battery Alliance because it was quite clear that without being able to manufacture batteries in Europe, we cannot make uh, the smart mobility in Europe. Uh, we would not have that electrification uh, of, of, of the transport and uh, it was extremely well uh, perceived by our car industry and we have over the last uh, uh, five years investment of more than 180 billion euros. I'm just using this, this example that this was at the start of uh, the mandate of Ursula von der Leyen and, and us as a college of uh, commissioners. Of course, we didn't know that the COVID was around the corner. We had absolutely no clue that the war will come back uh, to Europe and that simply that the, the, the global environment will become much rougher neighborhood, that it, would be, uh, uh, that it would have direct consequences for the global supply chains. I think we've been all learning in, in a harsh way that uh, dependency costs a lot of money. We have seen it on uh, when we've been uh, acquiring um, uh, medicines and medicaments and we have seen what Russian manipulation uh, with the energy supplies uh, could do to, to our economy. And therefore, in parallel to the green policies, we've been also developing the, the concept of the open strategic autonomy of uh, European Union, where we went very thoroughly through all the products, through all critical raw materials, through all, all future-oriented uh, uh, technologies, and been looking uh, what we need to have uh, in Europe, how we can diversify the supplies, uh, and where we can cooperate with our neighbors in the neighborhood and with aligned global partners, just to make sure they will not be, uh, again, put into the situation of, of dependency on uh, supplies from one country or, or from, uh, from uh, uh, one, one, one company. And that was our concept for quite some time. So I can say that when we have seen that uh, United States of America put such a huge focus on uh, acceleration of the green transition and, and, and green, green policies, uh, first, of course, we very much welcome that. But at the same time, we have seen that it might have uh, a discriminatory impact uh, on our own economy in Europe. And therefore, as among the partners and friends, uh, uh, we immediately entered into talking about this issue with them. And I think that after the visit of uh, Ursula von der Leyen to the, to the DC, uh, we can say that uh, we resolve uh, most of the issues. We found a solution for the uh, electric vehicles, uh, for the critical raw materials, for the transparency of the um, uh, of different uh, financial incentives which United States would be providing. Uh, to, the, to, the, to the companies there, and we would be exchanging, exchanging this information so we, so we know uh, uh, what is happening, I would say, on the both sides of the Atlantic. And now I would just make the reference, that's exactly the reason why the level playing field is so important uh, for us also in the relationship with Switzerland, why we need to have the same rules if it comes to the, to the state aid, because we just have to be fair to our companies and we have to have a uh, fair, fair competition, so we would have, uh, I would say, the level playing field if it comes to uh, economic, uh, uh, economic development. And of course, uh, I think that if you look at uh, um, Swiss uh, potential, you have very innovative company, or very strong in, in machinery, you have uh, uh, very good uh, uh, energy, energy mix. And you have very strong researchers, and I was visiting CERN, um, even though it's not part of our EU cooperation, but it's very important research center, the most important in that field in the, in the, in the, in the world. So I think that the place of Switzerland is indeed in the, in the, in the, heart, uh, in the heart of Europe, not only geographically, but in many of these innovative uh, policies. And to do that uh, in a way that you would feel good about it, that your neighbors would, good, would feel good about it. That the people who are coming here and, and travel back and forth because, because, the, because they work here, because they live here, because they, they are researchers, because they're students, uh, because they, they commute uh, every day. All this uh, is absolutely uh, important for, for that overall contribution to what I believe will be our common European or, let's put it, democracy's success, uh, which is so needed uh, in this uh, very complicated role. To so the gentleman, the former student of, uh, I wouldn't guess, <laughs> for the, for the, Freiburg, uh, of the Fre uh, Freiburg University, thank you very much for that question. And of course, we are fully, fully, fully aware of the need to have a uh, good deal 
uh, for Switzerland, for uh, Swiss citizens, but I can tell you it's also very important for me because I have to come in front of uh, 27 member states, some of the ambassadors are, are seated here, uh, I have to come in front of the, in front of the uh, members of the uh, European Parliament and, and I can tell you that they have very demanding questions. They, they, they want to know how is it going, how it will affect uh, the neighboring region, neighboring countries, what is the, the balance we are trying to achieve in our relationship, what is the, what is the perspective we see uh, in uh, uh, this uh, bilateral, bilateral cooperation. So we need to have a balanced good deals uh, for, the, for the both sides. And I can also tell you, and uh, that's also the subject of the discussion with uh, Mr. Cassis, we are ready to, to work with our uh, Swiss partners in the outreach, if that would be required. Tomorrow I will, I will talk to the both upper and uh, lower uh, house uh, uh, members. I will speak to the uh, representatives of the, of the trade unions uh, to the social partners. I'm very glad that I had the opportunity to talk to the young people here uh, in Fribourg. And once again, Madam Rector, thank you very much for that, uh, for that invitation. And uh, we are ready to continue uh, uh, this dialogue because looking at, 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 at the briefs of the uh, last years, not everything was uh, well explained, not everything was well understood, and especially the progress which was made in the area of social policies, of social security, on uh, making sure that we would have, uh, as I said, same wage for the same work at the, at, the, at the same place across the European Union, was probably not that uh, well uh, perceived and uh, uh, analyzed and understood in Switzerland, and we are, of course, very happy to do that uh, tomorrow or in any subsequent meetings uh, we will have, because we know that in the end, uh, uh, the people will have uh, a very important uh, say. And then uh, the, the question on the, on the, on the, Swiss, uh, on the Swiss youth. I think you will you have a very important role. Therefore, I was already addressing you as uh, future leaders. Uh, I have to say that uh, I have three children, 32, 30, two daughters and son, um, uh, 23. It's the mo mo most challenging child, I have to say. <laughs> he wants to be artist. Artists are special. And... <laughs> So, so um, uh, I, I know that how the environment in, in, in which you are growing has transformed, has, ha, has changed, uh, how, the, uh, how much your world is shaped by the social media, uh, by uh, that you, you are gathering the information in different way that we have been from the, from the books, from the, from the TV, from the, from, the, from, the, from the radio. And at the, at the same time, um, I know how complicated it is to sometimes to make a right choice because sometimes my feeling is that, uh, that there might be too many choices at the, at the, at the same time. I mean, so from, from us, from one side, it was simple and more difficult, but you are living in an extremely demanding, demanding uh, world and, and you will see such an acceleration of history that uh, we probably haven't witnessed. If it comes to the new technologies, if it comes to the, to the climate change, if it comes uh, 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 to, I would say, uh, development of completely new democratic democratic tools based on uh, on these on these new uh, social media instruments uh, that it would be very important uh, to have to have leaders to have young people who are committed to democracy who are committed to human rights who are committed to the true and verified information who are who are engaging to solve the problems not, not just to, to, to criticize them who are ready to come with your creativity uh, to bring uh, these new approaches uh, uh, to, the, to the table and on top of it in Europe to do it across different linguistic and, uh, and cultural barriers because I believe that this makes us rich. We have different stories, different histories, uh, different languages and that's uh, why uh, people love to come to Europe. Therefore, they, they, uh, they, they love to work in Europe and therefore uh, they see us as kind of a beacon of uh, the, the highest uh, quality of life in the world. And that would be your mission, to maintain it, to develop it, and to, and to keep it in, uh, in a proper uh, democratic uh, framework. And I believe that the de generation which is so well educated, so well versed in using all these new technologies, gathering all that vast information, 
which is now at, available at the, at, the, at the fingertips. That would be the opportunity, that would be the challenge, but I'm, I'm very hopeful if it comes to the future of the European youth. You will make it. Thank you. Das war ein ideales Schlusswort. Uh, Paul, <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vice President, for uh, being here, uh, for uh, having uh, your optimistic point of, uh, of view. I uh, share it, uh, this optimistic point of view. Nous arrivons maintenant à la fin de cette uh, célébration. Uh, nous allons encore avoir une, uh, un dernier chant du cœur de chambre de l'université. Il me reste à, maintenant à remercier tout un ensemble de personnes, n'ayez pas peur, je ne vais pas les nommer euh, chacune et chacun, mais toutes les personnes dans les facultés qui ont organisé aujourd'hui les différents événements dans notre, pour, pour notre journée euh, de euh, l'Europe, de, euh, de l'équipe du rectorat, euh, notamment Mme Catherine Garbi qui est en charge de l'organisation, ainsi que l'équipe du Centre d'études européennes avec Mme Andrea qui ont euh, œuvré pour l'organisation euh, aujourd'hui. Et évidemment, je souhaite remercier vivement le cœur de chambre de l'université pour sa représentation. J'aimerais aussi remercier vous tous et toutes pour votre intérêt pour la journée de l'Europe de l'université de Fribourg. J'ose espérer aussi pour l'université de Fribourg tout court, hein, qui est une belle université. Et last but not least, I want to thank Mr. Vice President for coming here. Uh, merci beaucoup, c'était un plaisir, un honneur et merci beaucoup d'être venu en Suisse. Merci, merci beaucoup pour votre gentille invitation. Merci. merci beaucoup pour votre accueil et merci beaucoup pour euh, toutes les questions. C'était vraiment quelque chose de très, très spécial pour euh, toute ma délégation et moi-même. Merci, merci encore une fois. Merci.